Everything that man designs carries within it the seeds of its own destruction. That includes bridges and buildings. The Brooklyn Bridge, one of the most famous bridges in the world for over 125 years. The reason that bridges last so long is because engineers look after them. They inspect them regularly, they maintain them, they paint them, they replace pieces that need to be replaced. Without people, without engineers, the deterioration process will accelerate dramatically. The most vulnerable parts of a suspension bridge are the steel vertical hanger cables. These have been tested in the laboratory, fortunately not in the bridge, but, but what you see is a classic kind of a failure that occurs in these wires. These are the individual wires, all right? That's an individual wire. Um, that probably has a tensile strength that's maybe 200,000 pounds per square inch. That's a very high strength steel. As strong as they are, these cables have a fatal flaw. It's the stuff they're made of. Steel is a mineral that comes from the earth. It's mostly iron. So it's probably 95, 98% iron. Exposed to moisture in the environment, iron will start to revert back to the minerals it came from. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It's gonna go back home. It came from the earth as iron oxide of some form, and it's gonna go back. This is the process we know as corrosion, and you see it wherever steel is exposed to moisture. The enemy of steel is corrosion. The problem is keeping the water out. Part of that is maintenance. If you don't maintain them, you will get corrosion. Completed in 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge cost $15 million to build. Over the last two decades, $3 billion have been spent maintaining it and the other bridges over the East River. In the time of humans, the Brooklyn Bridge was continually maintained and fully repainted roughly every dozen years. While across the country in San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge was protected at all times by a vigilant brigade of 17 iron workers and 38 painters. What do they do all the time? They will tell you, we paint this bridge continuously. What happens when that stops? I can tell you what happens when that stops. The cables begin to rust, the paint peels off, the wires begin to break, and they'll come to a point where the bridge is gonna come down. Seventy-five years after people. Most of the 600 million cars that once traveled the roads of the world are now just rusted remnants of the human past. Abandoned cars will behave differently depending on the environment that they're in. A car left in the Mojave Desert, for example, is going to last a long time. A car abandoned in my native Scotland is going to have a very different fate. Any cars in a coastal environment with salt in the atmosphere, they might not last more than 20, 30 years. Tires deflate within a few years, although the rubber and synthetics they're made of will remain intact for centuries. Paint deteriorates quickly, and once it flakes away, Rust corrodes the car's body at a rate of five thousandths of an inch per year. Seventy-five years after humans, most cars, even in the most forgiving of environments, will be reduced to skeletons. After a century, the family car is a barely recognizable heap of metal. It's now 100 years into a life after people. The Brooklyn Bridge, which had stood for over 125 years with people, can't survive even a century without them. 
As the cables fail, the deck and railings begin to warp and sway. The deck pulls free and the roadway spills into the East River. As an engineer, it's very sad to contemplate that this beautiful, iconic structure has got an end to its life. But without maintenance, an end to its life it certainly has. How exactly do bridges fail? Once corrosion starts, the wires begin to crack. And the wire doesn't have to have a very big crack before it breaks, maybe a third of the way through. But you may wonder, what happens when they fail? How do they fail? Do they just break, or what do they do? And the answer is they tend to shred and, and fail with individual strands starting to fail and then kind of cascading, and a whole series of wires then begin to break. A suspension bridge like the Golden Gate can survive the weakening of one of its vertical cables. But once two or three start to go, the whole bridge is in jeopardy. Twisted steel crashes into the waters below. It's going to be gone. 200 years? I doubt it will last 200 years. The bridge is going to be in the drink. If some of our largest structures have already failed after 100 years, can there be any hope that our civilization will leave a permanent mark after we're gone? What will remain of the records of our history and culture a hundred years after people? Our vaults contain our most precious materials, and their biggest enemies are temperature and humidity. As long as their long-term storage is kept at these very controlled settings, we feel assured that the materials will be lasting a long time. Stored under ideal conditions, paper and film both have an estimated shelf life of two to three hundred years. But expose them to the rigors of an uncontrolled environment, and that lifespan is cut at least in half. If all the power went off, probably within a week, we'd see very big spikes in the temperature and humidity. In this hostile environment, cellulose acetate, the most common material used for films and photographs throughout the 20th century, begins to bubble and warm. All of that culture and history, from the landings on D-Day to Hollywood films, and even your cherished home movies and photographs, won't last a century without the care of humans. So those precious images, given time, are going to end up like this. All of these are examples of various stages in the decay of cellulose acetate-based films, exposed to very high amounts of humidity. Essentially, these materials are finished. In libraries, the great repositories of our collective knowledge the damage comes from microscopic invaders. Although we can't see them, mold spores are on all the surfaces around us, lying dormant, biding their time for the right conditions to strike. High humidity creates the right conditions. And so the situation is set up for the mold to really bloom. Some books and documents will avoid this fate. The Dead Sea Scrolls survived 2,000 years in caves in the Judean desert, owing their longevity to the arid climate and lack of damaging sunlight. But these